Hello everybody, this is Saberrex coming to you live with my fourth video review for the Beasts of the Mesozoic Raptor Series 1 6 scale action figures by Creative Beast Studio and David Silva. And today we are going to be looking at Dromaeosaurus albertensis, number 7 in the toy line. So here we are, and there it is. And before we take a look at the figure itself, let's take a quick look at the packaging. So here we have the packaging for Dromaeosaurus albertensis. And here is the magnified version of the full body illustration by Jonathan Quo. And I really like how that came out, because unlike the rest of the figures, which are against um, desert and jungle, this guy is against snow, which makes him really look like an arctic predator. Inside you have the removable diorama that can be placed behind the figure for added effect and that looks really interesting as well. It looks like the boreal forests of northern Canada and the taiga forests of the north in Russia and um, the Far East. Absolutely gorgeous in regards to that. And on the back here you have the full body illustration again by Jonathan Quo along with some fun facts about the creature itself. And I really, of course, love this polar dinosaur type of look for the illustration. Here is the list of figures in the toy line, not including the fans' choice variants. And there you have it for the packaging for Dromaeosaurus. So, moving on to the figure. This is one I have been waiting to do ever since I got the Beasts of the Mesozoic figures themselves, because this is one of my all-time favorite dromaeosaurs, my favorite raptors that is in the toy line. This is actually the dinosaur that gave its name to the dromaeosauridae, the raptors themselves. This is the type specimen. This is the first dromaeosaur that was ever found, and I really love how this figure was done in regards to its paint job, in regards to how it looks, everything about it. And color-wise, he is actually based on a Finnish goshawk, but he also looks like he has a bit of snowy owl in there as well, and I really like how that looks. And taking him off the stand, which I can do since he is on the leaning stand instead of the full clip-on stand, let's take a look at his features. Now here he is, close up, and I love that face. He absolutely looks like he's going to take a bite out of something. And I love the detail on there. He, he really looks like an arctic predator. And his color scheme is gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, in regards to his um, being on the leaning stand, there's a reason for that, and that is because of this piece on the hip where my thumb is. Now, he actually has um, a soft plastic adhere, adhered to his pelvis right here, which is all these little feathers, and that actually prevents him from being attached to with the clip-on um, with the clip-on stand piece, so you actually have to have the leaning stand on there for him as a result. He does have all 26 points of articulation, as is universal for the the uh, Beasts of the Mesozoic toy line, and he's got the two sockets that you can attach his tail into for maximum position, um, for maximum position and posing and I really like how the tail was done as well. It's a nice big fan, white leading into darker brownish black, and on the bottom it is also very nice looking, absolutely gorgeous, and his feet are absolutely beautiful as well. I mean, looking at his feet, they almost look like the feet of a snowy owl. They're furry and textured, just gorgeous, gorgeous looking feet on this figure. And of course, like all the Beasts of the Mesozoic figures, he does have the sickle claws and the deadly toes. And 
yeah, he absolutely looks terrifying. Like all these figures, his wings are his wings are actually soft plastic, as is this feather piece on the chest. He does have a realistic um, articulation in regards to that. Um, maybe a little less. Um, maybe a little less mobile than some of the other figures because of this chest piece here, but overall, it's still realistic. He does have the opening and closing jaws, he can move his tongue, all of that, and he can move his neck and head as well. And I absolutely love what they did with it. I, I, I just love the color scheme for it. And overall, this is one of the ones I've been looking forward to for a long time. Dromaeosaurus is this is the one that started it all in regards to the Dromaeosauridae. And interestingly enough, Dromaeosaurus has one of the strongest bites of any uh, Dromaeosaur known. Its bite was around three times as strong as that of a Velociraptor. So this was a raptor that was probably using its jaws more than its claws to kill prey. And it was also probably able to crush bone. And the interesting thing about it is if you happen to find fossils of Dromaeosaurus in Alberta, Canada, where this animal is found, which is kind of unlikely because Dromaeosaurus was very rare in its environment, but if you happen to find these fig the um, if you happen to find the teeth of this dinosaur in uh, Canada, they are often mistaken for those of a Tyrannosaur. Dromaeosaurus has very thick teeth, and as a result of that, you could easily mistake these teeth for those of a larger dinosaur, such as a Tyrannosaur like Albertosaurus or Gorgosaurus or even Despletosaurus if it was a baby. Yeah, so Dromaeosaurus, very easy to mistake if you don't know what you're looking at, if you happen to find fossils of it, but an absolutely unique dinosaur that is it, well known. Not as well known as Velociraptor, but I am very glad that they decided to add this figure to the toy line because th this guy he needs some love too. He this this is the raptor that gave its entire name to the family group, the Dromaeosaurs, and he is probably one of my favorite raptors overall, alongside Velociraptor and Utah Raptor and Dakota Raptor. So there you have that in regards to that. Now, placing him just on his side here, like that, and looking at his stand, he does have a ver the same hidden um, the same hidden compartment for his toes, and he has both of those running toes in there because um, he actually stands very well on his leaning stand, and I wasn't interested in posing him in a running pose. And as you can see here. He does have this leaning stand, which you just sit him on, and he stays there according, or in, um, according to his own weight. And he absolutely uh, does very well in balancing in regards to that. He's actually better balanced as a result than many of the other dromaeosaurs in the toy line. Because, yeah, he, he just leans there on in regards to his own weight. He doesn't have he doesn't have that balance problem that many of the other ones do but overall I really like the stand itself and the display base because this is snow and rocks it absolutely looks and screams arctic and cold and yeah I actually kinda shiver just thinking about it but very very nicely done and I really yeah, I really enjoy that. Now, putting him back on the stand, he does stand very, very nicely and just balances out exceedingly well, as you can see here. Yeah, he absolutely looks very good, and he again, he does have a much better her balance than many of these other figures. So, yeah, he looks really really nicely done and if you're wondering why I have his wings out like this it's because I decided to put him in a threat display like um, barn owls and hawks are known to do so a little bit of a realistic pose that keeps him well balanced and looks really good as a result he actually looks a lot bigger 
with uh, his wings out spread like that. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, size comparison wise, um, he is one of the more intermediates in size. So let's take a look at some of the other figures in here with him. Now, here he is with Balar Bondok. As you can see, Balar is maybe a little bit taller, I would say. Not by much, um, if they were standing in different positions, but maybe a little bit more or so than Dromaeosaurus. And yeah, the color comparison is um, rather nice. You know, the contrast between them is very, very nice. Tropical versus uh, Arctic. Uh, Dromaeosaurus is actually a little bit longer than a little bit longer than Balar, and yeah, he he's absolutely um, yeah he looks a lot more robust than Balar does. He, he he's a little bit more menacing in, in regards to his appearance than Balar looks. But there you have that. Yeah, so he's again intermediate in size between um, some of the other ones. Here he is alongside his close cousin, Atrociraptor. Now, Atrociraptor and Dromaeosaurus are actually very closely related. They are members of the same uh, Dromaeosaur subfamily, known as the Dromaeosaurinae, rather than just the Dromaeosauridae, which is the more robust and powerful raptors, and contains most of the large raptor species outside of the of the um, inside the Dromaeosauridae, like um, Utah Raptor, uh, Dakota Raptor, those are all part of the Dromaeosaurinae. Um, and many of the figures in the lineup are actually Dromaeosaurines, or Velociraptorines, which are the ones most closely related to Velociraptor. But as you can see, they do look a lot alike in regards to their um, physical nature. Um, Color-wise, of course, it's a night. Uh, it's um, they don't look a lot alike, but if you look at their heads, uh, you'll see they they do share a, quite a bit of resemblance, and they look really good together, Dromaeosaurus and Atrociraptor, because again they're very closely related, and yeah, they they really kind of complement each other. Um, Atrociraptor is a bit size wise. He's he's a little bit larger than Dromaeosaurus, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but overall, there, there is not much difference in size between them. Maybe about an inch is worth of length, maybe not, ugh, maybe half an inch is worth of length and maybe about a quarter inch in height at the hip if I had, if I had a Dromaeosaurus standing up straight, but very, very nice in regards to that. And lastly, let's compare him to his more distant cousin, Velociraptor. Because, of course, nothing's complete without Velociraptor. Um, but here he is with Velociraptor. Yep, so... Velociraptor is a little bit longer than Dromaeosaurus. Maybe, like, three-quarters of an inch. He is... Probably a little taller than Dromaeosaurus, but not by much. Um, yeah, maybe about a quarter inch at most. Yeah. But absolutely, yeah, you can see the differences between there. Um, Velociraptor has a much more narrow, um, long snout, and Dromaeosaurus is more robust. But overall, they do... Yeah, they are related, and they do look pretty good together as well in regards to um, contrasting uh, colors and habitats because of the stands. Absolutely magnificent in re that regard. So, in regards to um, the toy line itself, um, he was the seventh figure made for it, and... Dromaeosaurus was, I think, the... Th yeah, he was like the third or... Yeah, I think he was like the third or fourth stretch goal reached. He, and 
I was thrilled when they um, when Dromiosaurus's stretch goal was reached because this is a guy who needed a bit more attention than a lot of the other raptors. He he just this is the first one that was ever uncovered, and he is absolutely gorgeous. Now, in regards to the figure itself, there is a second variant of this, the Fans Choice variant, and unlike this one, which is based on a Finnish goshawk, a northern goshawk, I should say, the Fans Choice variant has a color scheme based more on that of a kestrel. And for the packaging art on that, the artwork for that was done by um, il by um, illustrator Sarah Richards, so very nicely done in regards to that, in regards to the painting itself, and the figure itself looks very great. Um, I guess you could differentiate them as male or female, depending on your choices, like this could be the female and the more colorful kestrel colored variant could be the male, but that, that would just be me if I had gotten the and the fans choice variant as well but I thought I would mention it here because that is just so cool in regards to that and I personally didn't like it as much as the uh, goshawk variant because it didn't look as terrifying but I really like it nevertheless and I thought I'd mention it here so in regards to his uh, pricing he was about the same as the other her um, stretch goal raptors um, $35 as opposed to the first three, uh, Velociraptor, Sargon, and Atrociraptor, which were uh, $40. Might be a little bit more now, but when he was on backer kit, uh, you could get this for about $35. And I highly recommend getting this figure. This is absolutely a worthwhile figure to get. It is the first of the dromaeosaurs that was ever uncovered, and it was uncovered by the man who discovered T-Rex, no less, Barnum Brown, and it would look great alongside any dinosaur figures you might have, like um, the other beasts of the Mesozoic, or alongside any of the Carnegie dinosaurs, or anything like that. Just worthwhile to get, worth every penny, and absolutely beautiful as a result. All the work that was done on this is absolutely superb. So this is Saber Rex signing out saying, you're never too old to play with toys, don't be afraid to unleash your inner child, and have a good day. Thank you.